in radiology department or privately anywhere when you went with your mom or dad or some uncle how beautifully the images are displayed on the screen and there is no pain in the procedure basically the ultrasound is a non invasive procedure and it is operator dependent there is no radiation or harm in it so it can be done in the pregnant female which is called fetal well being ultrasound first of all the introduction as i have already told you there is no harm and there is no risk to the patient <clears throat> it is least expensive then the other procedures or investigations like ct mr and it is portable sometimes uh, when it is needed in the icu or emergency departments we can go and do the portable ultrasound at bed side an abdominal ultrasound uses the reflected sound waves to produce a picture of the organ and other structures in the upper abdomen and occasionally a specialized ultrasound is ordered for a detailed evaluation of a specific organ such as kub ultrasound <coughs> basically all the magic is in the transducer it has uh, piezoelectric crystals which causes the sound waves to be displayed and the image is obtained there are different types of transducers linear and the sometimes it is um, uh, curvy linear or sometimes it is the um, uh, uh, longitudinal type which is uh, used for trans uh, vaginal or transrectal ultrasound we can also do b scan which is the orbital scan by the ultrasound <clears throat> what can we see with the abdominal ultrasound it is used to evaluate the liver which is the large dome shaped organ and lies under the rib cage under the right side of the uh, diaphragm and in the abdomen it produces bile which helps out in digesting the food store sugar and breaks down many of the body waste products this is the picture of the ultrasonographic image of the liver you can see this is the white line is diaphragm and this is this is structure is the liver you can see these intrahepatic biliary channels portal triad so this is the right lobe of the liver by placing the transducer at different places says we can evaluate the left lobe and the other organs which we want to uh, imagine abdominal ultrasound can evaluate the gallbladder also <coughs> which is a sac like organ beneath the liver it stores the bile and helps in digestion especially helping in the absorption of the fat soluble vitamins usually we ask the patient uh, to come npo means fasting at least for 8 to 10 hour so that we can evaluate the gallbladder uh, clearly otherwise it can be seen as a contracted structure when patient has taken the meal you can see this is the gall bladder and you can see this thing this is the neck the spleen is also evaluated by the abdominal ultrasound and it is a soft round organ that helps fight infection and it is located under the left hemidiaphragm just adjacent to the stomach you can see this image this is spleen this is spleen these white things are different bowel shadows 
there are multiple artifacts also seen due to ribs due to the bowel gas shadows and the abdominal fat fluid etc pancreas pancreas is also evaluated by the upper abdominal ultrasound it basically helps to digest the food and the enzymes are released into the intestine and it is main, its main function is to release the insulin into the blood stream which helps out in utilizing the sugar of the for the energy you can see this thing is pancreas this thing is going this this is pancreas this is the cvd then kidneys which are also evaluated by the abdominal ultrasound and they are bean shaped organs and lies retroperitoneally we can also do the ultrasound of different uh, vascular structures like doctor of carotid doctor of renal and doppler of eyelid vessels um, in fetus we can do the fetal valve fetal uh, middle cerebral artery uh, doppler ultrasound so uh, doppler imaging looks at the artery and we can get, get the image and trace the pattern of the blood flow like in this thing this is the lumen of an artery we put flow in it, into it this is uh, red it is artery and the parameter is set here we can see the pattern of the flow we can see this duplex waveform pattern okay, in the how how the waveform of is formed if there is any uh, difference uh, seen in the pattern of the this uh, waveform we can identify the pathology this is a healthy artery and the flow is smooth and all in the same direction this thing but if there is some luminal narrowing some atherosclerotic sclerotic plaques or some other pathology in the intima we can evaluate it this is the ima imaging of the liver this is you can see the liver parenchyma the terminology which we use in the ultrasound is echogenicity it can be isoechoic if it seems like uh, the liver parenchyma you can see this thing gray 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 if it is less than that it is hypoechoic and if it is brighter than that like white it is hyperechoic so there is a well defined hypoechoic or cystic area seen in the liver in the right lobe and it is simple hepatic cyst hepatic cyst again hepatic cyst but in this cyst you can see some echogenic foci this thing within the lumen so this can be an infected cyst when you see some echogenic foci or debris you this can be an infected cyst high rated cyst it can be a well defined structure with some echogenic material and the thick wall so it can be the daughter cyst inside and it is a case of high rated cyst seen by the ultrasonography then some neoplastic lesion usually the benign lesions are uh, well defined and the neoplastic lesions are ill defined or infiltrative in appearance you can see this thing it has lobulated appearance and it is infiltrating into the adjacent liver parenchyma so we put some flow into it doppler flow and you can see this pattern blue and red and some sort of orange so it shows the vascularity then hepatocellular carcinoma it can also be seen by the ultrasound so it shows some irregular wall and heterogeneous pattern 
then cirrhosis as you know the cirrhosis causes the liver to shrink and form forms different nodules so the pet the margins of the liver are nodular and irregular the whole liver is shrunken and nodular with irregularities at its margin this is a known case of cirrhosis of the liver then this is the um, view of a gallbladder which shows multiple calculi along its base you can see every solid thing sinks at, it, at its base so these are multiple calculi of varying sizes which are giving this you can see we are cre cre creating some uh, like uh, posterior acoustic shadowing and this is causing this is called posterior acoustic shadowing and they are at the base of gallbladder so this is a case of polydithiasis again a case of polydithiasis in the previous image they were multiple and in this image they are, they are, there are single uh, there is single calculus then abscess liver abscess can be of different type it can show a large necrotic material within it which appears as hypoechoic and if it is not um, uh, if it is organized then it will show some solid component also which appears at heterogeneous heterogeneous means a mixed pattern like some hypoechoic some echogenic so this is the liquefied pattern of the uh, uh, abscess and this is all abscess cavity which is occupying the right lobe of the liver and showing heterogeneous pattern with liquid center this thing if we would put some liver uh, some needle into the liver we can only aspirate this liquefied part we cannot aspirate the thing from this part this portion of the liver then pancreatitis pancreatitis is the inflammation of the pancreas and in this the main thing is the pancreas is enlarged so there is diffuse enlargement of the pancreas and when it is enlarged it shows some exudative material around it so we can see some fluid fluid thing hypoechoic thing around it so and there are some complications of the pancre pancreatitis like phlegmon formation which can be seen adjacent to it if there is some necrotic material or some internal necrosis can be also be seen but ct is the better modality then pancreatic abscess you can see this liquefied pattern and this is regular pancreatic wall so pancreatic abscess can also be picked this is the phlegmonous collection uh, with areas of internal necrosis then this is the spleen when we turn the transducer into opposite size a side we can see the spleen even on the right side it all depends on the operator how he or she performs the uh, uh, imaging and sometimes to see some uh, pathology we have to rotate the transducer so this is the case of simple hepatic cyst this thing it is a well defined thing hypoechoic and this is the spleen then splenic infarct now you can see if the beam is coming from the uh, below and we can see this thing in fact in fact is hypoechoic and wedge shaped and usually it touches the subcapsular or capsular surface in the periphery of the spleen then appendicitis appendicitis is again the inflammation of the appendix and the patient has all the symptoms of uh, right hypochondrial pain uh, right alicosa pain sorry uh, and all uh, tenderness and uh, sometimes raised uh, wbc count so in the ultrasound we can see a tubular organ which shows the inflamed appendix normally we, we are unable to see it uh, by the ultrasound and it shows we have to measure the wall the wall thickness is more than 3 or mm or 4 mm and the length of the appendix is more than 1 cm 
then we label it as a appendicitis case. Sometimes we can see periappendiceal fluid or sometimes if the appendix ruptures, uh, we can see some periappendiceal collection or sometimes we can see the appendiculate which is the cause of one of the cause of the appendicitis. Then sometimes we can see strangulation of the bowel. Um, it can occur in some cases of hernias, internal hernias or external hernias. There is invagination of the bowel loop into this uh, defect and the, the rest of the bowel might be infarcted. Means that the blood supply is compromised and we have to put the Doppler flow to see the image of the rest of the bowel. Hernia. We can also see the defect uh, in the anterior abdominal wall or within the adjacent uh, inguinal regions etc to see for the uh, hernias also. Hernias can be internal or external. Then this thing fluid. Fluid is white, uh, uh, black I have show, uh, told you earlier. It is hypoechoic blood if it occur if it is seen in the peritoneum or abdomen it is hyperechoic like this but this is not the blood these are the bowel loops which are seen dispersed in the large ascites means fluid in the peritoneal cavity so this is the large ascites and these are the different echogenic bowel loops then we, if, if uh, we are evaluating the kidneys then you can see the this is the capsule of the kidney beautifully seen and these are the pelvic aliceal system basically calysis of the kidney and this is the renal fat area hilum of the kidney so you can see this is the these are dilated prominent so this is a case of hydronephrosis calculi appear as uh, echogenic foci as I have already told you in the um, polylithiasis, they are rounded or some uh, can adopt any pattern and they give posterior acoustic shadowing. This, this, these lines are called posterior acoustic shadowing. This is the cortex, this is the medulla. You can see this is calculus and causing posterior acoustic shadowing. So, this is a, the, a case of a nephrolithiasis. Then pyelonephritis. Sometimes the infection in the kidney can cause prominence of the pelvic aliceal system, and sometimes there is loss of corticomedullary distinction with dilated uh, fluid filled uh, renal uh, pel pelvic aliceal system yes. and the nephrons and the calluses, which can contain some debris within it due to infection. Then bladder calculus. As I have already told you, the calculi settle in the bottom or in the base. So this is the base of the urinary bladder. You can see the this is the shape of the urinary bladder with urine within it, and this uh, is causing again posterior caustic shadowing and also thickening of the adjacent bladder wall with irregularity. So calculus in the urinary bladder. Then you can see. This is the ultrasound of the urinary bladder. This is the completely the urinary bladder. And there is some soft tissue density area, soft tissue echogenicity area, mixed density. This is the soft tissue dense, echogenicity. And you can see it is arising from the posterior, posterior wall of the uh, urinary bladder on the left. And it is projecting within the lumen. And patient might have the symptoms of hematuria. So, even ultrasound is so important to giving the preliminary diagnosis. Although we have to do the CT or MRI and other cystoscopy to take the biopsy for the patient, uh, but uh, this is the first clue because this is the baseline investigation which is not giving any harm to the patient. Then, hydrocele. Testicular ultrasound, you can see this is the testis, but in the scrotum, there is so much fluid collection which is called hydrocele. Now CT at the abdomen. 
what is the intended learning outcome basically the student should learn at the end of this lecture some cross sectional ct anatomy of the abdomen and the pathology as i have already told you this is the transverse scan basically all of you have done your uh, postings in the radiology and i have given so much emphasis in the planes because this is the imaging cross sectional imaging so we have to adopt the image in three planes like axial like in the sagittal and in the coronal plane when we take the image from antero posterior in the transverse dimension it is called axial imaging and when we they took the image in the coronal plane from top to from front to um, um, back it is coronal imaging and when we took the image from the side then it is sagittal image it can be uh, we have to set the window level and window width in the ct and the slice thickness is also set by our technician and usually we um, uh, patient to patient it might be varied like in cases of um, uh, pancreas uh, pancreatic protocol we uh, took uh, 5 mm or 3 mm slices and slice thickness is 3 mm or 5 mm and sometimes we set it into 10 mm or 5 mm pattern in normal other imaging of the abdomen basically we will deal only with the emergency radiology like trauma hemoperitoneum injuries to the major viscera and some non traumatic emergencies like intestinal obstruction appendicitis gut perforation etc we also deal with the ascites and peritonitis now first of all uh, the ct scan of the upper abdomen <coughs> excuse me now you have to identify this is the axial image post contrast why i am saying post contrast because you can see the contrast white thing in the aorta this is the vertebral body these are the posterior bony elements and these are the ribs you can see the terminology which we use in the ct scanning is the density as we measure different things in the different hospital unit we have to give uh isodens hypodens or hyperdens terminologies so in this case we can see this heart, this is the heart portion of the some portion of the heart and this is the liver and normally it should have attenuation like this this but we can see there is a linear hypodens area is going from this surface of the liver up to the this surface and it is extending up to the capsule also so this is a liver laceration and we grade it uh, differently in the whether this is grade 1 2 3 or 4 so you don't have to go into the uh, so much detail but this is the liver laceration patient has motor vehicle accident then this is the liver normal liver this is the spleen this is the stomach with ear fluid level normal pattern but we cannot see this thing fluid around the liver it is abnormal it is it shows there is some ascites then there is some uh, ear specks of ear outside the ribs and the lateral abdominal wall is so much thickened the muscles are so much thickened so definitely this is a case of trauma and when we go to the spleen adjacent to the stomach we see there is it is this showing same a laceration or a linear irregular line extending from both surfaces of the spleen with some ill defined hypodensities within the spleen parenchyma and irregular capsule with large subcapsular collection so this is a case of splenic trauma splenic injury then this is the liver 
this is the left lobe this is the right lobe this is the stomach and uh, these are the kidneys this is the aorta giving its branch this is the pancreas so there is irregular hypotense line which is going from the body of the spleen up to its duct but not injuring it so it is again a case of a spleen this uh, spleen uh, sorry a case of uh, uh, pancreatic injury pancreatic laceration this is the large bowel loop renal injury you can see there is a laceration going from the kidney from its outer surface with a large some perinephric hematoma and so the it is uh, crossing uh, the midline and going to the other surface but the uh, pedicle is preserved means the renal artery is showing some attenuation and the rest of the kidney tissue is also showing attenuation attenuation means it is enhancing with the contrast this, the, while this area is non enhancing so it means if this area is dead but the rest of the renal parenchyma is well preserved and this is the large subcapsular hematoma then this is again large pancreatic uh, laceration with um, peripancreatic hematoma and this is ascites then this is the gallbladder you can see the gallbladder wall is thickened this echogenic this uh, uh, um, hyperdense line is the mucosa of the gallbladder and there is a large collection into it this is a case of cholecystitis and it is causing inflammation and adjacent fluid with uh, there is also ascites seen then pancreatic pseudocyst as i have told you in the ultrasound imaging when there is, this is the pancreas which is showing necrotic tissue and adjacent to it is the a uh, large collection which is uh, showing peripheral wall enhancement and this is the pancreatic pseudocyst or phlegmon so pancreatic large pseudocyst resulting from the central pancreatic necrosis then cholelithiasis it can be you can see this laminated calculus in the gallbladder then you can see this thing there is uh, some uh, this uh, side of the kidney you can see that there it is uh, normal and the this side side the pelvic aricial system is so much dilated basically the renal pelvis this thing this thing and you can see also the dilated pancreatic duct here you can see so if there might be when we see the further image it might might be the case of uh like uh, puj obstruction then in the ct scan abdomen you can see the specks of hair hair is black in ct so you can see uh, the specks of hair in the intrahepatic biliary channels and this is a case of pneumobilia then this thing you can see this large cystic area this is basically the large gallbladder which is over distended and there is uh, 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 in the pancreas there are multiple areas seen and with peri peri uh, pancreatic and periaortic lymphadenopathy which is causing encasement of the superior mesenteric vessels also superior superior mesenteric vessel and also abutting the pancreas then you can see some diverticulitis there is um, um, diverticular abscesses also there is uh, out pouching from the wall of the wall, wall of the uh, bowel loops the basically the terminal ideal loops and there is adjacent pericolonic inflammation and the this thing fusentric fatty stranding and these are the small hypo Um, uh, it's echo a uh, hypo dense collection seen, and these are the diverticulitis. Then 
you can see this is the stomach we sometimes we give oral contrast also to specify the bowel loops this is the liver this is the left kidney this is the pancreas normal this is the descending colon this is the image of the spleen actually in ct in single image we cannot give you the entire pathology because we uh, used to have work station or multiple images and then i can show you a single if uh, sometimes it is a case of pancreatitis i can show you just the pancreatic pseudocyst but there is some uh, uh, like necrotic material or some internal necrosis of pancreas can be seen in the other image and some adjacent um, like uh, nodes or adjacent things like ascites can be seen in the third image so um, that's why i am showing you the single image which is best seen for bus best pathology you can see this this is so much like uh, this is enhancing renal parenchyma is enhancing and these are the medulla this is cortex this is the medulla but in this portion and this is the renal pelvis normal but in this portion the cortex and medulla and this pelvis there is some soft tissue density mass which is showing minimal patchy post contrast enhancement so this might be a some renal cell carcinoma then bladder and you can see some growth from the um, base of the urinary bladder which is projecting intraluminally into the um, uh, bladder and causing of some obstruction so this is the case of bladder carcinoma then again a case of diverticulitis out pouchings much better image and you can see peri diverticular fat stranding and this thing mesenteric fat stranding and these are the small small abscess formation with air fluid level then ulcerative colitis as you are have uh, been shown previously in the previous some um, x-ray imaging okay there is a hostile pattern and the lead pipe appearance so this is the ct scan of the pelvis and it is showing this uh, rectum and the, this is the sigmoid and it is showing thick wall it is showing thick wall but the entire colon is a hostile and it is showing some out pouching also which is called pseudo diverticuli this thing out pouchings so this is a case of ulcerative colitis there is so much inflammatory standing seen then crohn disease crohn is again another inflammatory bowel disease and maximally it is uh, involving the terminal ileal lesion but we can see the skip lesion in the rest of the colon also we have given the patient oral contrast and you can see this is all bowel containing contrast but in the right ileal fossa when there is terminal ileum and this is the cecum there is so much thick wall with adjacent inflammatory changes and fat is finding so it is a case of uh, crohn's disease sometimes we can see uh, this thing um, the differential is usually the abdominal tb but the lymph nodes are more in the case of tuberculosis then sometimes uh, you can see the different attenuation pattern mean attenuation means enhancement patterns of the liver parenchyma like the central is more enhancing the periphery is less enhancing and you can see you cannot uh, see the uh, intrahepatic uh, vein the hepatic veins also so and there is also ascites and hypertrophy of the caudate lobe so this is a case of bartchiari syndrome and they have uh, centripetal enhancement then this is there is a some lesion in the segment 4 of the liver and there are few ill defined lesions also there is bilateral pleural effusion see with some ascites also so this is a case of metastasis then this is again a ct scan of the abdomen and you can see this is the heart you can see these are the vessels this is the descending aorta and you can see this is the gastroesophageal junction it is so much thickened and it has lost its fat planes with the adjacent pericardium 
and the aorta is refrigerated to phase is more than 90 degrees means okay, it is going beyond the this thing this line 90 degree line of aorta so this is a case of carcinoma of the esophagus then again CT scan of the liver and it is showing a well defined cystic area with multiple internal septations this thing and daughter cyst this is a case of hydrated cyst of the liver then abscess there is thick walled hypodense structure with enhancing peripheral wall and this is a case of liver abscess then again the hydrated cyst it can be single it can be multiple with internal daughter cyst and this is a case of hydrated cyst of the liver then lymphoma lymphoma appears as multiple hypodense deposits in different organs with hepatosplenomegaly so you can see different sizes deposits of different sizes in the spleen which is also enlarged and you can see this these are the enlarged lymph nodes which are causing engagement of the superior mesenteric vessels branches of the aorta and you can see this is the part of the IVC you, you can see so large nodal mass with hypodense deposits in the spleen case of lymphoma then again uh, CT scan of the liver in triphasic pattern is a very good tool for the detection of the HCC hepatocellular carcinoma these are showing usually the arterial enhancement uh, in the arterial phase and the washout in the portovenous and delayed phases so these are multiple hepatomas of varying sizes multicentric hepatoma then you can see a uh, next image uh, the nodular liver the this is the ascites you can see multiple areas then again some retroperitoneal mass large retroperitoneal mass and it is uh, adjacent it causing significant compression over the uh, left kidney left renal vein and left renal artery also and uh, also causing compression over the adjacent bowel loops and the pancreas also so retroperitoneal mass which can be a sarcoma then there is a soft tissue density mass arising from the upper pole of the left kidney which is showing mixed attenuation means sometimes it is uh, in the internal areas it is showing hypoattenuation and there is patchy post contrast enhancement so it is causing significant displacement of the adjacent organs and there is a hypotense area seen in the left renal artery also which is showing a tumor thrombus so is this is a case of um, renal cell carcinoma again renal cell carcinoma then sometimes uh, we can use different types of windows in the CT to evaluate the different structures like if I am seeing uh, I, I want to evaluate the abdominal structures like liver, spleen, uh, bowel I will put it up or go to the soft tissue window <coughs> sorry if I want to evaluate the lung then I don't have to go to the soft tissue window I have to change the window to uh, the lung window which is just a single click and if I want to evaluate the bones because in cases of trauma it is very important to evaluate the bone also because there are so many hidden fractures which are not uh, clarified by the x-ray or uh, uh, due to the condition of the patient no doctor is uh, so much concerned about that fracture which later on if uh, healed cause some deformity or trouble to the patient in, uh, with deformities so it is important to go to the bone window like in this case we can see the fracture of the eyelid bone you can see the linear displaced fracture of the eyelid bone also and there is also fracture of the sacral ala so later on this patient might have some um, obstruction some uh, walking problem plus the neural foramina ca can be um, impinged so nerve problem can also occur
now some is interest special investigation regarding uh, we usually uh, just want to discuss few things because it is too much like uh, it is so lengthy like hepatobiliary system if we want to evaluate by the nuclear scanning we have to do the high dye scan which is usually the 99 and technetium and uh, basically this is the tech high dye scan and usually in cases of biliary atresia we can demonstrate good hepatic uptake with no evidence of excretion into the bowel at 24 hour and pre uh, treatment means pre scan phenobarb is very important so it stimulate the hepatic enzymes and uh, false negative study in a patient uh, uh, helpful to minimize the possibility of a false negative study in a patient with a uh, patent biliary system but poor excretion so you cannot see any excretion into the duodenum but the hepatic in intake uh, uptake is increased simultaneously I cannot show you the previous image because so much images cannot be displayed in a PPT and uh, we used to do Meckel's scan for the diverticulum etc so you don't, don't need to go into those that much detail then MRCP uh, in MRI we don't do MRI abdomen in our setup like in JPMC because uh, there are few reasons we cannot stop the gut motility like in cardiac imaging or in the chest imaging we used to do uh, CT because it can be done in a single breath hole but MRI chest or MRI abdomen cannot be done but uh, can be done but we don't have that much protocol because uh, of few things like we have to pre-medicate the patient with glucagon which is expensive and sometimes not available and we have it, it is quite lengthy procedure with so much patience required by the patient and there are so much artifacts because of the uh, bowel movement which is uh, not under the self-control of the patient uh, we can reduce it by giving uh, bascopan and some uh, like glucagon type of uh, drugs but these drugs cannot be uh, available so easily or cannot be purchased and it is quite lengthy so many of the needed patients of uh, some tumor of the uh, like uh, a tumor of the brain a tumor of the spine or other things can be missed so if we will try to do the like uh, MRI of the abdomen, entire abdomen so we just do the MRCP which is a magnetic resonance, resonance cholangiography cholangiopancreatography basically so uh, we will take only the heavily T2 images and uh, any pathology of the biliary uh, system is well defined usually you can see the gallbladder you can see this thing the CVD you can see the right and left hepatic ducts and the, it is all like so much beautifully um, Im 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 imagined and uh, they are well evaluated sometimes we can see this there is abrupt cut off in the distal part of the CVD so due to codilithiasis we can see then um, like uh, nodular pattern we can see the calcula in the gallbladder lumen and so much structure basically structures neoplasm pancreatic pathology congenital anomalies we can do uh, the MRCP easily and we used to ask the patient just to have a pineapple juice before the scan and we do it no contrast is, is needed in the MRCP examination so this is the some brief uh, review of the <coughs> same again the pathology you can see the dilated CBD and all that <coughs> <coughs> so um, we this is all about the MRCP and uh, I think uh, this for these were difficult to grasp in a single lecture or something but uh, I have come, tried to cover it simply and uh, in a formative way so just read it and uh, I think you will be better able to understand these things okay